Hey everybody, welcome into Outer Rhythm Fancy Sports. I'm 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 Jamie, and we got Eli on the other side. Man, it's actually it's it's been a little while. It's been you know maybe a couple weeks. We just kind of like you know we just took a hi hiatus, and we're just kind of like, eh, we'll come back whenever because it's the off season for us. So we got all kinds of prep work to do and some different stuff we have on our minds that we want to kind of cover, you know? So, but today we're actually going to talk about Bucky Irvin from Oregon Ducks running back. Yeah. Bucky! <laughs> yeah, it's time. It, it's, get Getting into some Bucky. Uh, you know, Oregon had had a great year. And, you know, we'll talk a little bit about, about the team. Obviously, I mean, one of the best. He, he was working behind one of the best offensive lines. You know, Bone. everybody knows about Bo Nix. And uh, you know some of the some of the studs on defense. So uh, Dan Lanning, the, you know the head coach, everybody knows about him. But Bucky Irving's kind of the unsung hero of, of, of the team, and you know they obviously smoked Liberty in the bowl game. So we'll get into Bucky, and we've got a uh, few other prospects that we're going to get into in the uh, probably coming weeks. Yeah, like Jay said, we yeah. were off for probably you know two weeks, two and a half weeks. You know we 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 he he says hiatus, I say hibernation. You know, we were both kind of napping <laughs> uh, drinking a little, drinking a little too much. Uh, 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 grandpa's cough medicine. Uh, uh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. The, <laughs> the the um, got a big bottle in my fridge. Like oh, you do too. Uh, yeah, maybe. Spread the wealth. Maybe. Uh, but uh, yeah, like Jay said, um, get into some more prospects. And if you guys want to tune in uh, to the normal stream. Uh, we should be doing that maybe maybe Wednesday, and that'll be quarterbacks, kind of our review of the rookie quarterbacks for 2023. Uh, the tight ends, I don't think we're going to do a live stream. That'll be tomorrow night, So, but that'll be posted as well. So we'll, we'll be doing more of these kind of shorter because we know, you know, throughout we've learned throughout the last, you know, year, a little over a year we've done this show. Uh, you know, not many people have the attention span. We don't, we don't either. So, uh, we're going to kind of shorten, <laughs> shorten stuff up, you know, splice stuff up, shorten stuff up, keep it short and sweet and kind of, kind of get to the, get to the main, uh, main points and everything. So we're going to do tight ends and that'll be posted later. And that'll be most likely tomorrow night. And then Wednesday we should do a live stream. So if you guys want to join in, uh, maybe a 30, 45 minute show. And that'll be uh, may maybe if there's a couple news headlines, so maybe, maybe we could talk a little bit about the, you know, preview of the NFC and AFC championship games or something, but it'll yeah. be mostly uh, the review on the uh, AF or AFC and NFC rookie quarterbacks. And so we'll be doing a lot of rookie stuff, a lot of college guy stuff uh, coming up in the next few weeks to, to month or so. So that's what you yes. can expect from us. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, if you don't want to catch catch this video, we always I always kind of all I'll post this on our uh, audio um, outlets too as well, Spotify, Apple, and um, Google as well. And and make sure you know make sure you join our Discord too as well. That will be in the description below after we post this video too as well. So make sure you guys uh, want to jump in, talk some college stuff or anything NFL or whatever, whichever. Just come in, jump in, and uh, come come chit chat with us. Uh, I like to grow our Discord just a little bit more this year. So, yeah, let's get down, get get, get, the, get down there, and if you got any comments too, get, you know, put them down, down in, in a, in a <laughs> get those comments down in the comments um, down below too as well. So, but anyways, um, we are going to dive into Oregon Ducks Bucky Irvin for for this video. So, what do we? I, what I do love we the, have? Well, first off, yeah, I love the name. Sports? <laughs> I love the name. It's, 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 it's a nickname. It's a nickname, but it's a hell of a nickname. Okay. Um, yeah. Running backs, you almost need to have a one name, you know, uh, the bus. <laughs> the, you know, you, you gotta have, is he Bucky is just a, it's a one name. Like nobody's gonna say Bucky. If this guy's a stud, nobody's gonna say Bucky Irving. It, nothing. Nobody's gonna use his real first name and Irving. It's gonna be Bucky. It's gonna be Bucky. Ooh, Bucky. I, so if he hits, Bucky, Bucky. We'll call him Bucky Chucky. Bucky, Bucky Chucky. Uh, Bucky, Bucky the Beaver. <laughs> country song or something. Uh, uh, but, you know, so we, we've we been using a lot of NFL draft buzz. At first, I was using a lot of P, uh, PFF uh, beginning of the year. I, we started doing these these college spotlights back in, like, August or September. Uh, did yeah. Riley Leonard. Riley, Riley Leonard from Duke, who transferred to Notre Dame. He was, 
he was the first guy we did. And then we've done other, other guys along the way, Braylon Allen from Wisconsin, uh, Malik neighbors, who's going to be an uh, absolute stud in the, in the NFL. He was, a, he's projected to be a top 10 pick. We did Malik neighbors. So if you want to go back and watch any of the, uh, uh, college spotlights previous to this, you know, you can go, uh, find it on the channel, you know, Jay organized everything beautifully. I uh, got a playlist there for that. Um, so yeah, Bucky's just the the next in a long line of, of, uh, varying picks, you know, any, anywhere from, you know, first round top 10 picks all the way down to sixth round picks. So we've, we've covered a lot of ground over the last four or five months. Uh, Bucky's yeah, just projected a just a little bit, just a little bit. Yeah, uh, just Bucky's a little projected. Bit. Bucky's projected to be a third round pick. Uh, overall prospect ranking, according to Draft Buzz, is 97. Um, the running back ranking is number five. I think I had to put it in there because that's what Dra Draft Buzz had. Uh, Travion Henderson from Ohio State, I think, is coming back to school. I think it was yes, on the. Yes. I think yeah. it was on ESPN or CBS Sports a few weeks back. So Bucky actually might be number four. He actually might be behind, you know, Trey Benson, Blake Corum. Um, the kid from yep. Texas, uh, Jonathan Brooks. So he actually yep. might be number four. So maybe we're maybe we're short changing Bucky a little bit. Um, 5'10", you know, 195 pounds. So a little little slight needs needs to put on a little bit of weight, and that was one of the the weaknesses, you know, that the scouts have on him. He needs to put on a little bit of muscle. Needs to put on a little bit of weight, which I mean, all these guys do. I mean, you get to the league, you know, you're gonna get you're gonna get fed like fed like a horse. You know, these guys can put on easily 10 to 15 pounds, and he'll be and then he'll be right in that 5'10 prototypical you know, 205, 210 running back range. Uh, so he'll be right where he needs to be. Runs a, a four, four, six. Uh, that's for a running back that, you know, that's a pretty damn good time. So he's got, he's got the wheels. He's shifty. Um, got good hands, good vision. So there's a lot to like uh, some of the, you know, more of the weaknesses, I should say uh, pass blocking. But John, last time I checked, Jonathan Taylor is like a top five running back. He's terrible at pass blocking. Um, uh, if you saw the game <laughs> earlier, they were Rashad, Rashad White, you know, the Bucks, Bucks starting running back in the playoff game, Rashad White slipped and got Baker, you know, jacked up by the corner, uh, by the Lions corner. So uh, there's a lot of running backs that are, that are elite talents that struggle with pass blocking. So that I'm not going to disqualify him just for that. And yeah, it's, he was, it is. Oh, go ahead, Jay. Go ahead, Jay. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I mean, most of these running backs, I think, you know, it, it, takes them a little time to actually kind of especially with the nfl pace too a little bit you know i mean you when you think about the you know these guys being pass blockers and stuff like that in college you know you don't see a whole ton of it i mean they kind of teach a little bit but you know i would think you know once they get more to the nfl you know they kind of kind of grind that into a lot of these prospects i'm sure kind of getting you know into the pass blocking as well too yeah and He's got, he was working behind the number two offensive line in college football. Oregon had like the, uh, you know, in terms of running and passing, they were number one. So this was the elite of the elite offensive line. So that might be another knock too. Well, Hey, well, Hey Bucky, uh, what can you do behind Carolina's offensive line? If we draft you, you know, what, what can you, you know, some of these, some of these awful, you know, what, what can you do behind the, the commander's offensive line? If we take you early in the third round or something. So um, be interesting to see, if you, you know, not, not having that, that elite level, you know, it'd be nice if he ended up in Dallas or, you know, Detroit, you know, one of these, uh, Detroit's not going to need him. They, they're stacked at running back, but you know, one of these teams that's got a elite offensive line, but I don't think it, it's going to, it's going to go that way for him. So um, I, you know what, uh, let's, let's get into his stats a little bit uh, for, uh, so 2021, he had like a little under 700 yards rushing at Minnesota. He was a gopher. And ended yep. up transferring. I don't blame them. you. See what they're paying at Oregon. I mean, they basically bought Bo Nix. Uh, you know, they, they bought this this past off season. They, they bought uh, you know Dylan Gabriel from uh, o, OU. So I mean, they bought a quarterback. They, they bought a bunch. They probably much bought that offensive line. Bought the defensive line. Uh, or Oregon's got yeah. Or if there's one thing Oregon's got. It's it's, it's money. So uh, you know they probably uh, bought up Bucky and and got him out of Minnesota. And that was the best thing for him. Because he he probably would have been an undrafted guy. Let's just be honest. If he had been like the three year starter for Minnesota in the Big Ten with with their lack of talent, yeah, it might not have ended so well. But you know, in, in 2022, you know, had over a thousand yards, um, five rushing touchdowns, three receiving touchdowns, uh, averaged over you know almost seven yards a carry. And second year, which would be uh, you know this past season, even better. 
you know, uh, almost 1,200 yards rushing, 11 rushing touchdowns, uh, over 400 more receiving uh, yards and a couple touchdowns there. So uh, 13 touchdowns overall. Just, yeah, just a, I think an underrated season because Oregon, you know, they were in the mix with Washington and, and the Pac-12 for that cha- for that conference title and what was going on nationally. They were trying to get a playoff spot. And had they beat Washington the second to last game of the year, you know, they would have, you know, they would have been in the playoff. And, and uh, I think Oregon could have done just as well as Washington did. I think I think they would have lost to Michigan ultimately, but Oregon could have been playing for the national championship, no doubt, with their quarterback and their offensive line. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and then, they, actually, they actually have oh. another. You know, they. I mean, with their weapons that they had. I mean, they they had uh, Troy. I think it's Troy Franklin. I think his name yeah, is. Yeah, Troy, Troy. Yep. I mean, he. He's, yep. 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 And he's another guy that they'll. Be, you know, he'll be in the NFL draft this year too, as well, and and why not? So I mean, Oregon. What I mean, if you guys didn't watch that or uh, Oregon and um, Washington game, I mean, I watched that one, and I mean, it was pretty much a, like literally like it was like a back and forth game. You know, one one team was scoring, the other team scored. You know, and in turn, end up, you know, Washington did win that game, but I mean. You can tell with both the way these offenses were that you know they were just going pretty much going up and down the field most most of the game until they kind of messed up you know but I mean I mean other than that I mean Oregon I mean I liked watching Oregon I mean they had they got talent that's for sure and Bucky is one of one of those you know great talents that you know I'll I'll get into him after he gets done with uh, his uh, side of Bucky but yeah I have I, I I don't know I guess I mean. I, I, you know, just kind of looking back, I actually kind of like Bucky a little bit more than some of these other guys. I mean, we, I know we talked about some of these other guys, you know, like um, EST. Um, I think there were a couple other guys too that we kind of, you, you know, Braylon Allen, you know. So, I mean, I, I mean, I didn't really, you know, when we did, when we did start this, it was, you know, it's, it's kind of like an eye opener, really. You know, it kind of opens your eyes just a little bit on, how to look at players, especially when it comes to dynasties to dynasty too, as well. You know, I mean, it's kind of gives you an eye opener to a lot of these guys too. Yeah. And, and that's kind of the, the whole uh, point of this or just of this is um, setting you guys up that are looking at it from a fantasy perspective, like, okay, how can this guy help me in dynasty? Well, I think he ends up with a team like the Vikings. If if I were to place a bet right now of all, you know, all the teams, so I'll give you a top three and hypothetically, okay, I'll put the Vikings at one. I'll put the, the Raiders at two. And you know what? I know they took Sean Tucker in the fifth round last year. Um, I could see him end up in Tampa. He's got a lot of the similar skill set to Rashad White. So that if they don't want to pay Rashad White in a couple of years or, you know, big, big running back money, which – I mean, that's debatable if he's worth it. I mean, he's very, very good right now, but we'll, we'll see what happens you know, next year. But um, I, I think the Bucs would be a, you know, sleeper number three team. But I, 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 I would bet, you know, uh, the, the Vikings, you know, they got rid of Dalvin Cook. Uh, Madison's not the answer. Uh, a couple other, uh, the, the, the kid from U, uh, UNC that you like, uh, he yeah. came in, he was solid. Um, name, name slips me, slips me um, right now, but um, he, 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 decent. Are you talking about no, um, no, was, uh, oh, oh, Devon, uh, Devontae Williams and um, the other, the other dude. Yeah, yeah, the uh, uh, yeah, no, no, no. Just if you, if you want to look that up while I'm talking, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it, it was the it was the running back that when Madison got hurt was filling in and, and filled in admirably. Anyways, I I could see I could see them you know oh, finding like a mid round yeah. version of Dalvin Cook. Now, Dalvin Cook, I mean, that's asking a lot. I mean, Dalvin Cook was 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 a Pro Bowl, you know, so, sometimes top three level running back in the league in, in his prime. I think people forget yeah. how good Dalvin is, just seeing him with with Baltimore and the Jets this year, you know, how, much, how much he's fallen off. But um, he can kind of be a poor man's version of Dalvin Cook. Or, or better yet, I, my comp would be Tajay Spears. Similar size, similar skill set. I think it'll be similar stats, too, in the NFL. Uh, Tajay, I think it's going to take over from Derrick Henry as the feature back in Tennessee. I don't know how good he's going to be, but if I, you know, I, Tajay's capable of being a top 15 running back. I, I think that's, yeah, I, I think that's kind of, I don't think, I, I don't see Tajay being a top five. He's not McCaffrey, you know, that level guy, uh, Aaron, even Aaron Jones. I don't think he'll be as good as Aaron Jones or a guy like that, but I, I can see him being a top 15 running back. And I could see that being the, uh, kind of the ceiling for Bucky too, is being a, you know, a, a good starter in the NFL. 
you know, a, a yeah, good starter. Yeah. And I think Tajay Spears is going to become that next year for Tennessee. Just, just nice and solid. Rashad White, you know, he's a, he's a, what we, we call a good starter, uh, you know, kind of that level guy. So, uh, Viking, I think I'd say the Vikings are probably the front runner in, in my, in my estimation. And just for, from some of the articles I was reading too, uh, Vikings are very interested in him as they should be. And that guy, he's got, like I said, he, he's got the goods. He's not, he's not a five tool as Donovan would say with the baseball. He's not a five tool running back, but he's probably a, probably a, probably a, a, a 4.1 tool. So I, I think he'll be, I think, uh, he, he, I think he'll be just fine. If he ends up in Minnesota. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or, I mean, or if Carolina snags him up, I mean, they, they need a running back down there. So, I mean, the help with, you know, with uh, Bryce Young or, and yeah, that. Carolina, I mean, I, they, they could easily. I don't. They could easily yeah, they could easily replace the box as number. You know. Yeah, Miles Sanders is junk. Miles Sanders is trash. And then with the Raiders, Josh Jacobs, I, I, I think it's an attitude problem. I mean, I, I don't know if it was McDaniels or what, but just, just developed this attitude problem. Had a big monster 2022. And, and you know, last year was just kind of, you know, hit and miss. And. You know, I, I like what I saw, Zamir White. I like what I saw from him, uh, but I could see the Raiders kind of like, hey, we're gonna we're gonna bring in a cheap third, you know, third round running back, and, and uh, you know, Bucky would fit well at the Raiders too. I think he'd he'd do well out there. The guy the Viking I was thinking of, uh, Ty Chandler. Yeah, yeah. Ty yeah, Chandler yeah. was was the guy that filled in for Madison, and Ty Chandler did a good yeah. job. I but Madison to me, Madison he's not quite not quite Miles Sanders, but you know, Ty Chandler is. Yeah, he or um, uh, Madison's not quite that, um, but he Madison's a he's a bum. I'm sorry, he, he's not <laughs> he's not a feature back. He's not yeah. he's not like one year. He, he's not even Tony Pollard. You know what I mean? Like a people thought could be a feature back, but he's not. He's not even that. I I think Bucky Irving could come in and probably be better than than Madison. You know, mid season of year one. <laughs> Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, you know, um, Taja, you know, we're talking about Taja Spears. I think he'll, I think he could be a top 25 running back next year. And, you know, if, if and if Bucky comes into, you know, a, a starting role next year, I mean, the way he, the way he, he actually does run. I mean, I can actually, see, I mean, I could see him being, in, you know, a, a top 25 running back depends on, it all depends on where he lands too, you know, in the, in the draft too, as well. I mean, if he lands in a good spot, Oh, most definitely. I mean, he, I could I could see it being a top twenty five running back next year. Um, yeah, did you no, have any? I, I agree. Did, did you have any other points to um, Bucky that you wanted to mention at all, or anything like that? Or, I mean, uh, I guess I mean you can. Yeah, no, I just I I know I was kind of all over the place. I was kind of all over the place there. Yeah. Uh, but let's go back. You know, just kind of uh, back up what I said, and I'll let Jay kind of finish up. His thoughts are his side of it. Two sides of Bucky sounds like a comic book. You know what I mean? I love that graphic. Here. <laughs> um, yeah. So he worked. He worked behind a great offensive line. He worked behind a great offensive line. So we'll see what he could. You know where he's drafted. Minnesota's offensive line is. Eh, you know, obviously Carolina's is bad. You know, the Raiders isn't too good. So he's all the teams that are going to be interested or probably in the mix for him are going to have average to below average offensive line. So we'll see what he can do there. He needs to put on a little bit of weight. Uh, pass blocking, they'll need to work with him on that, at, at least get it where it's NFL level. Because, you know, you got to be able to have him on the field some, sometimes on third down. Or, or uh, you know, if, it's, if you're behind, you know, if you're down 21 points, which the Panthers will be a lot next year, and especially Bryce Young's your quarterback, uh, you're going <laughs> to have to pick up those blitzes. So <clears throat> they'll work with him on that, put on the weight. And all the other stuff, like I said, good vision, good hands, uh, elusive, shifty. Uh, you know, he's got all the uh, NFL, you know, the prototypical NFL skills. So I, th I think uh, I think Bucky uh, and, and he's got the name. That's that's the most important thing. Got the name. <laughs> Man, <that's how> <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It, you know, you know, I was just, you know, kind of just tie everything in here, too. I mean, I was kind of looking at his what he did. You know, it, you know, if most when with most of us that play college football and stuff like that, fantasy football, that is, you know, he put up two hundred ninety three. Um, fancy points in PPR style setting. So I was just kind of look, you know, I, I myself was kind of looking at, well, what can he, you know, coming into the NFL, what could he, what kind of player can he be? What kind of points could he get, get you? And, you know, looking at his fantasy outlook here, I mean, he played 14 games last year, you know, 100, 186 attempts, hundred, um, a, he was a thousand yard running back last year. He averaged about 6.3 
which is not bad at all. I mean, just looking at, you know, some of the um, video on him, I mean, just the way his running style was and whatnot, you know, it's, he's kind of like a patient runner, but if he sees a hole, you know, he, he can get through it pretty damn quick. And he, you know, he, especially when he follows his blockers from offensive linemen and whatnot, he, he can break off one of those. And there, there's a, the only, the only thing I could see from him if, is if the defensive linemen stop him, I mean, that's only, you know, you know, just get him at the, at the line. This is the only way though, maybe, you know, get this guy stopped because, you know, from what I was seeing, he is a hard guy to bring down. And once he, once he gets into space, there's, there's, no catching this guy it's you know he's kind of he's got a little bit in the receiving game a little bit you know for check downs and stuff like that you know so i mean he's i think he had a couple touchdowns this year too as well i didn't put that in there but he had 11 touchdowns this year and then um so that was kind of his 2023 kind of outlook there um so in this i kind of broke it down into what did he do in the pac 12 well bucky was the leading pretty much fantasy points leader in the Pac-12 conference last year behind um, Huskies Dylan Johnson and then um, Cal's Jaden Ottson. Um, Jaden Ottson. Um, Jaden Ott, my bad. Um, so pretty pretty much Dylan, he had 262 fantasy points. And, you know, Jaden had 260. And you can see that Dylan is um, for entering the NFL draft, the same as Bucky. Um, but, yeah, I mean, just kind of looking at what he did, at, what Bucky did in the Pac-12 itself, I mean, he pretty much tore it up when it came to running back in, you know, just in that Pac-12 conference, you know. So, I mean, he was lighting it up, and there was no way no one's going to be catching him. But just insane. I mean, it just uh, – some more – you know, just – he's able – you know, you know, like I mentioned earlier, he was – once he finds a hole, open hole, I mean, he's gone. He gets through as quick as he can, and, you know, he's, he's jumping through these holes. Um and then the other thing too, when when he gets into these you know open spaces, you know he's he's very hard to bring down. I mean, it's it's almost like a Alvin Kamara in my eyes a little bit, you know, because it's the way his way he runs and he's, you know, he doesn't give up on a play. He'll make it. He'll make a bad play into a good play. You know, he'll he'll get those yardages that you're just like, how in the hell did he do that? You know, he'll do some spin moves and and whatnot. So I mean, his. It, that's the crazy thing about it. Yeah, he'll he'll make defenders miss too when he gets in the to these open fields. So that, that part of the game is, you know, I I like it. I was like, damn, dude. I'm like, I think I'm kind of starting to like this guy more and more each time. I'm kind of kind of just watching some film on him and and whatnot. Um, but you know, so his so he, Bucky here, he actually had like 400 yard games. And then he actually had a hundred yard game in the Fiesta Bowl here um, for their bowl game. Here, here's the other thing too. I was just kind of like he had a few hundred yard games, and then um, I was kind of you know I broke down what you know out of nine out of the fourteen games he actually was averaging about sixty three yard, a little bit over sixty three yards per per game when he wasn't having you know a hundred yard game in there. So I was that's a little insight for for some of you guys out there. Um, I just think that he, you know, if he does get to the NFL that, you know, he probably, you know, he, you could probably see him maybe having, you know, a, if he ends up being the lead back, you know, you know, maybe these little short 63, you know, 60 some odd yard games, you know, until he actually gets more comfortable with the NFL pace of game and where he can actually toss out a hundred yard game too. But Hey, you, you never know with the way his running style is, you know, you never know. He can end up being, you know, getting a hundred yard game. Just boom, the way he is. Um, he could, yeah, he could. Yeah, I mean, high, like I said, high end, like ceiling. Maybe, like I said, top fifteen, top twenty. Um, you know, no run, you know, fantasy running back in the league. I, I don't think. I, I think, yeah, what you were saying, more realistic. You know, especially his first year, kind of a spot filling guy kind of like what 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 keaton you know keaton mitchell from baltimore was where, where yeah not, not quite not quite uh you know a chain from from the dolphins you know where he was just blowing up and you know you know 150 and 200 yard <laughs> rookie games like they were going on a style not not that level rookie season but more of the keaton mitchell before he got hurt you know kind yeah. of just yeah. pop will pop stuff here and there you'll know his name you'll know bucky irving uh wherever wherever he lands up i personally think the vikings 
and and you'll know his name. He'll be he'll be mixing up reps with with Ty Chandler and you know Madison if he's still on the roster. You know guys like that. So or yeah. beat him out. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, for now for my last slide here. Um, this is this is a kind of like a kind of a national overlook. What um what Bucky did, you know, just you know, come like pretty much all just everybody in general here. And you can tell that Ollie Gordon was pretty much the guy to have last year. Um, fantasy, fan, especially fantasy wise, you know, um, yeah. as you can see, a lot of these, uh, the guys I got there are guys that will be like his competition this year in this rookie class, you know, coming in Blake Corum, Blake Watson, um, Kim, Vid, um, Kim, my Vidal from Troy. Monty um, Vidal. Yep. Yep. And then we have, um, Ray Davis, you know, I already mentioned a couple other guys, but yeah, there's some other guys in there like uh, Benson from Florida State, you know, the other the other guys. So these are just the top guys that were, you know, just fancy outlook wise that I was like, hmm, interesting. Um, but yeah, it's I, I think this is going to be an interesting draft class, and you know, if it, you know, I was talking to somebody else here this. Um, last night a little bit who would you have would you take blake corm or would you like you know um bucky Irvin? because blake you know, blake 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 corm well blake corm is going to be a starting running back week one just watch blake corm is, is I, a, in my opinion he, he he right now he steps in he's one of the best 32 running backs in the nfl day one he, he'll he will i i don't care if it's through camp preseason something's going to happen injury i don't i don't know how he's going to do it but blake Corum will be a starting running back uh for some team oh i'm i'm, I'm sure i'm sure blake Corum was i mean we i know we covered i know we covered him and i was just talking just you know another individual about like if you if it came down to you in this draft class you know would would you would you take blake or would you take irving and you know uh, that I mean uh, for Di dynasty because uh, you know what, I think Irving might have a longer career, and he's got more of a skill set. Blake Corum it reminds me a lot of Ray Rice. Remember the old yeah. Ravens running back? You know, yeah. Remember he shot up like a star before you know, yeah, be beating up women and stuff. But um, <laughs> you, you know, he had a short career. You know what I mean? Uh, Marine Maurice Jones Drew, another guy that that you know, I, I know all these kind of shorter, compact, stud running backs. I'm I'm naming them off because that's who he reminds me of, like uh, MJD. Ray Rice, guys like yep. that. They had, they were very great. They, I mean, they were great for a small, you know, but, but guys like Bucky could last in the league a lot longer. So that's the question, like dynasty wise. And that's, a, and that's actually a, a, my, my immediate response is like Blake Corum because I know first year, no questions asked. Blake Corum is the better pick. Uh, you know, so for like a redraft league, there's no question. Blake Corum, absolutely. But dynasty, that's, that gets a little more interesting. I would still lean towards Blake Corum just because the, of, of the amount of talent, but, I, I could be dead wrong and Bucky could have a 10 year career. He could be, he could be, you know, he could be Jameer Gibbs. He could be a third round version of Jameer Gibbs. I mean, Alvin Kamara was a, was a late round pick. You know what I mean? Yeah. Alvin Kamara is like a borderline. He's a borderline hall of fame running back. So if not a hall of fame running back, so, you know, and those are those, that's the high end, obviously where I think he'll be Tajay Spears, high end Alvin Kamara, Jameer Gibbs, so, you know, I don't think there's, I don't think Bucky's going to be a bust. I don't think he's going to be, he's, he's, he's not going to be one of those guys that, you know, like, like the, the kid from the 49ers who was drafted a couple of years ago, they already cut. I think he was drafted two years ago and he was like third round running back. They already cut him. So it's not going to be that, that situation where he's out of the league in two years, but uh, yeah, dynasty wise. Yeah. That's very interesting. That's I'm glad you had that, that talk uh, or that conversation with that guy. Yeah, and I, I, I myself would actually, I would actually take Bucky over um, Blake Corum. Yeah, yeah. D even, even though he might not give me like my, you know, my, uh, you know, what I would want th the first year. I mean, at least it would be a little something. But you know, if he end up actually being the lead back like that next year, that that would be. I mean, that would be a steal in in my eyes. You know, I mean, you know, you have yourself a, you know, pretty much a. RB one going into the next year, you know, in 2025, yep. you know, a lot, so a lot like a lot like Tajay Spears, who who basically had to, you know, he had a decent rookie year, but and we saw we saw flashes, but he waited behind Derrick Henry, so yeah, if Bucky ends up uh, in in that sort of situation. That's why I was thinking if he went the Raiders, the kind of the Raiders route, you know, Josh Jacobs is just to me he's he's in a he's in he's due for a decline attitude problem. I I could just see him being out the door you know, by 2025.
five. And then if he ended up there, Bucky Irving could be the starting running back for the Raiders in 2025, for for example. And that and the Raiders are my number two team he could end up with. So yeah, I, I get yeah. what you're saying. Like, just sit behind, you know, a, a, a proven starter for a year and then, you know, work your way up and then take the job. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And um, pretty much, you know, you can see he was he was 24th. Um rushing in, in nas um nas national wise and then he had he was in fi fifth and receiving too as well for 413 yards there as well so you can kind of kind of see what he did nationally too so i mean i mean i i just think right you know if i were if i were doing a dynasty draft right now i would you know without taking a look at the a couple other guys you know you know benson and um, the guy from Texas too, as well. I mean, really, we, we haven't dug into those two guys yet, but you know, just the guys that we covered already, I know we Blake, I know we covered Blake and, um, Braylon Allen and, um, a couple other guys too already. We kind of talked about a little bit. It's, you know, the it's team. Es, 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 Estime from, uh, from Notre yep. Dame, uh, yep. a couple other running backs. I'd like to get into Ray Day. I, you have, you have him listed at number five for, um, um, you know, FBS fantasy running backs yep. there. Ray Davis from Kentucky. I'd like to get into him. Yeah, we could probably do definitely. Him. I, yeah, we could probably um, I cover him next. He's another guy. Obviously, Ollie, Ollie, we're going forward, just seeing the name Ollie Gordon. Get used to that name. Yeah. So by yeah. 20, the, next year at this time, we'll be talking, you know, uh, probably top 10, top 15 draft pick. And I mean, and that's, I mean, unless you're Jameer Gibbs or, you know, one of these <laughs> other, you know, like guys from five, 10 years ago go you know saquon and zeke and those kind of he's gonna be that level guy where we're talking like not you know third round pick i mean ollie gordon's gonna be a uh, high first round pick just, just watch yeah. this guy absolute yeah, stud he, he will. uh and and okay okay state okay state's gonna be a threat uh next year in the big 12 l losing losing texas and oklahoma i think i think oklahoma state and utah would be my you know two of my uh, preseason favorites there but we'll get into that in our conversation you know We'll probably talks more college eventually down the line, but yeah, just keep <laughs> it on, on, uh, you know, Bucky. I mean, the, you see his, you see his receiver stats right there. This isn't the NFL Four thirteen doesn't seem like that much, but they aren't playing that many games. You gotta remember that. So yeah. they're not playing as many games, a and B, they just, they don't do as many of the, you know, check downs. I think there's a lot, there's just a lot of stuff in the NFL. You can get a lot of cheap receiving yards. If you're a running back, you can be a shitty receiving running back and still manage to get 300 yards, you know, receiving. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, most definitely. So, well, he's, well, is he going to be a dual, you know, is he going to be, uh, you know, can he be a modern running back, you know, being able to receive? Yeah. I, I don't think that's any issue. I think he's going to be able to catch, uh, catch balls out of the backfield easily. And, and Tajay Spears did too. Tajay Spears had what over 400 yards receiving his first year. Yeah, I believe so. He had a little bit over something like that. In there. Yeah. Something yeah. Like that. Mean, so yeah, it's going to be, it's be very, very similar rookie. If I were to bet money, that's why I put him as my comp. Uh, you're, you're the first year, you're not going to get a huge return on your investment, which is why dynasty that's, you're going to have to do your own, um, soul searching on that. But, uh, second year and beyond, that's when, that's when you might, you, you know, uh, be like, wow, I'm thankful that I took Bucky Irving where I took him, you know, I stole him basically, but his first year, Blake Corum is going to be better. Um, I think, I think Trey Benson's going to be better his first year. And then from beyond that, you know, we'll, we'll, it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, for sure. Um, just a couple more quick notes on Bucky here too. I mean, I think he can be a good, you know, short, uh, short pass, pass, pass catcher, you know, in the check downs, you know, you know, you know, quarterbacks rush, you know, so he, he could be all right with that. You can kind of tell he, he about 413 yards there. Um, I already mentioned he's, he's pretty much good in the open field of when, um, you know, if defenders come and, you know, he's can break, you know, he can, He's got the talent to break away from defenders. Uh, and like I already mentioned, um, you know, kind of the old line thing too, as well. If you, oh, depends on which defense he's playing, you know, if they can stuff him and why not kind of keep him from actually breaking out, you know, that'd be kind of thing. But from some of the things that I've seen, and, um, you know, it's kind of like, does he have the home run ability to, you know, when he does get, you know, if they were down, say, you know, down in the, he breaks one out from the 20 yard line to, to, which, you know, to, to the end zone, you know, it's kind of like, what does, would he have that next level capabilities of jumping, you know, that far, you know, coming into the draft. Yeah, and, we, That's, and, and we, we've discussed that with some of these running backs coming out, like some of them lack that home run speed, but yeah. I, I think we forget, I think we take it for granted, like how rare that is. Not everybody's Adrian Peterson. You know what I mean? 
Uh, <laughs> not not everybody's just just a complete home run hitter. There's a lot of you know Zeke Elliotts that'll just you know just feed. They'll feed eight yards. They'll feed ten yards and just wear you down. So I mean, there's there's a multitude of ways for these guys to get points, to get yards, to get catches. So uh, yeah, the top end speed doesn't bother me because. Like I said, he he has a little bit, you know, he has a little bit of Aaron Jones in him too. And Aaron Jones just rips off these 60 yard runs like they're nothing too. And he was a late round pick. So, you know, you can't, you know, it's, it, it's not, it's an inexact science, but there's yeah, a lot of like yeah. good players that he reminds me of that have comps, even, you know, where I think he's going to be at Tajay Spears. I've said that name 10 times because I'm be because I want, you know, fantasy owners to be realistic about what you can expect his first year. You saw, you know, the 400 yards rushing, 400 yards receiving, you know, give or take. I'm not, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but that's what Tajay had his first year, you know, roughly about 800 total scrimmage yards. That's kind of what you can expect, I think, from um, Bucky Irving his first year. So just so you're realistic, you don't overdraft him, you don't do anything stupid. You know, I mean, if he's popping like week 12, like there have been injuries and, and, or, or fantasy, he'll be one of those guys waiver wire week 12, you know, week 11, week 12 next year. Uh, like like Keaton Mitchell a lot, and you'll be like, "Wow, I need, I need to go snag that guy. I can't believe he's available." You know, he'll he'll be that name. Yeah, th- I think there will be a few of them that will probably end up like that, and I think Bucky will be one of those guys that could, you know, especially in redraft leagues that would probably go undrafted, and he yeah. sit there in the waiver wire, and you know, if the guys that were really already doing their, you know, um, due diligence on this guy, he they won't be allowing this guy on the waiver wire at all. So. Yeah. Nope. But I think that nope. kind of wraps I think that kind of wraps up our Bucky conversation here. It was it was a good conversation, I think, you know, we you know, kind of diving into what Bucky could be and and whatnot. So Yeah, just is there anything else you want to highlight real quick at all? I'm going to cuz I'm going to wrap this butt bad boy up and we'll get her uploaded. Uh no, just uh Kind of keep it, kind of keep your expectations um, tampered. I guess just you know, don't don't take this guy in in the first round because like oh oh hey he's gonna be I don't know I I, I guess sometimes people are like they're too high and they're too low on guys and I, I like to stay right where I think their their sweet spot is and I I think with this guy it's you know in that seven hundred to nine hundred scrimmage total scrimmage yards kind of a year. And whether that happens in the back half of the year and you're picking him up on the waiver wire or whatever injuries happen, he does it, you know, kind of like Kyler, you remember Kyron Williams, his first year, you know, not this year where he popped, yeah. but like his first year had a, had a couple really good games before he got hurt. You know, it could be a situation like that. Damian Pierce, obviously he was never the same after that with, with his, you know, his rookie year, but you know, first half of the year, he was just, he was, you know, out, out like gangbusters. So, um, I, yeah, I would just I, I tamper your expectations, but if he's there, snag him up. You know, if, if it's a reasonable pick, if it's later, you know, in the later rounds, I, and when I mean waiver, I, you know, I was kind of talking, you know, ten to twelve man leagues. There might be some dummies that aren't looking at him, and there always is. But in deeper leagues, yeah, later rounds, apps, you you need to snag him up. Absolutely, sixteen man, yeah. twenty man league, he needs to be drafted. Absolutely. Yes, for sure. Um, but yeah, I think that kind of wraps up our Bucky conversation here. Um, yeah, make sure. <laughs> uh, giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, giddy up. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, make sure you guys give this video a like. Um, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Our Discord link will be in the description below too, as well. Um, and uh, if you guys have any comments, make sure you uh, leave them below too, as well. Um, we like to hear what your guys' thoughts are and whatnot. So let um, make sure you follow our audio um, on Spotify, Apple, and Google as well. Um, we will uh, make sure to get that uploaded as well so you can we're at um, autorhythm fancy sports and all those platforms there and um yeah we will catch you guys next time on not sure quite yet but we'll let you guys know so other than that thank you for tuning in one sec uh, yeah expect expect a couple videos this week though we don't know if they're going to be Live or not, more than likely not with the tight ends, but possibly Wednesday with the quarterbacks. But right now, we're just before we get it out there, um, should be some tight end content for rookies. You know, so that would be like Sam Laporta, 
um, Michael Mayer from uh, the Raiders, you know, guys like that. And then obviously the quarterbacks, it would be, you know, CJ, uh, Bryce Young, AR5, you know, guys like that. So yep. that, that's what you can expect from us this this coming this coming week. So, but, yes, uh, yeah, as well. thank you for, you know, uh, this won't be live. So, you know, whenever you guys come across this, uh, if you know anybody that does Dynasty Fantasy Football or any Oregon fans or anybody that could make use of this video, help us, you know, share it. And we, you know, greatly appreciate it. Yes, we would greatly appreciate it. Um, yep. Um, so I think we'll see you guys next time. So I'm Jamie. That's Eli. We'll see you guys next time from Autorhythm Fantasy Sports. We'll catch you guys yeah. later. Yeah. Later, guys.